Hey, good morning everybody. Nick from Meat Smoke Fire here, and I've just realized I've forgotten to put my apron on. Anyway, um, a chilly one. It is, according to the technology, which everyone took the mickey out of me, I nearly said piss then. But, um, <gasps> First swear word. Six degrees. We were in t-shirts last week, Andy. What's going I on? I know. And now this we've got our coats rubbish. on and it's cold and I don't know, even know what, oh, my apron's over there. Didn't even know what I'm doing. Anyway. Um, so we had our first class of the year uh, yesterday, um, and it was even colder. Uh, it snowed, uh, it was windy, it was wild, uh, but we had a good time. And I suspect there are at least two serious hangovers this morning. Um, mm -hmm. So if anyone's on with a hangover, let us know and Helena can shout it out. But I suspect two of the people are a little bit hungover. Anyway, we had a great day. Uh, did lots of cooking. I don't know if you saw the tart to tan. Probably my best tart to tan ever. I mean, we do good ones, but that one was perfect. And uh, um, even I went, oh, and they thought I was a bit mad. Anyway, um, so today, three cooks, snacks, or little bits, or whatever. Um, so we've got one that I've never, well, no. All of them. No, no, I've cooked <laughs> two. One and a half that I've never cooked before. <laughs> if you can have one and a half dishes. Um, so um, I got to go and see Miles, the, my butcher, who used to be at the GOG and isn't there anymore. And, uh, and now has a butchery a little bit further away, but I got to go and see him for the first time and see his excellent setup down at Morgan's Butchery. And so all of our meat for the class yesterday and some of the meat for today uh, comes from Miles. Uh, it's so nice having, you know, been back with my butcher. So cool. Um, so all our classes, we will no doubt be getting all of our meat from Miles. Um, so he has challenged me or suggested we cook something a little bit different. Lamb spare ribs. Um, now I've not done it before. He said it should cook just like a rack of lamb. So we're going to find out. Um, so we'll do those in a minute. Anyway, let me grab the camera, show you what's going on. We've got Andy on camera today in the cold, not happy, um, but she's wrapped up. So that's all right. And we'll, we'll back you over to the fire in a bit. And I'll be shaking later. So. Yeah, yeah. So if the camera's going like this later, it's Andy. Um, <laughs> we've got the fire on, of course, the RB73, lovely and toasty. Um, details are on my website. Helena is Mrs. Meat Smoke Fire, is drinking water. Um, not due to a hangover, though. No, not due to a hangover, but uh, on that's keyboard. That's and Mama is out here. And if she moves from here, we're going to move her over there to a spare stool right next to the fire. But she's here. Red wine today. What's going yes. on? Didn't we have any fizz? Well, it's kind of a red wine day, I think. It's coldish. Really. Okay, cool. And it will go with some of the dishes. So yes. I'll pass you back to Andy. Okay. There we go. Right. So um, if there's anyone new on, welcome. Um, oh, okay, oh, oh. we'll go over. Hold on, so, hold on. on. So Nick from yesterday. Hi. Morning, Nick. It's a pleasure having you here. Uh, Miguel was on today. Morning, Miguel. Uh, uh, Miguel, who cooked the lovely chilli. Yes. Looked awesome. Mark from Smoke Fine Food. Morning, Smoke. Mark from Smoke Fine Food. So yeah. up in Newcastle. Mark has been... Mark cooks on his egg just about every day. You, you know, follow him. Um, his posts are incredible. Sue Stone. Then. Morning, Sue. Stu, Sue on her Kamado Joes. We don't like... We don't, you know, talk about the red ones. Um, Three of our people yesterday had Kamado Joes. Interesting. Uh, Roger Frost. Butch Morning, Roger. Grills. Butch Carlos. Grill. Morning, Carlos. Hugh Simpson has barbecue. And Steve from Churchwood, Fis uh, Churchwood, Churchwood Fish Fisheries. Fisheries. We were talking about you yesterday, Steve, because one of the guys was a fly fisherman. And a friend. Oh, and a friend, friend, friend of, of Marco. Martin. And Martin. And, yeah. yeah. John Pritchard. Uh, Jane Bleakley. <coughs> Karen. Harold. Wow. Harry, Vicky Mumford, yeah. All on. Morning, everyone. Um, any hangovers that you're going to own up to? The two that have the hangovers, possibly, I don't think we're on. Okay, don't so uh, um, Big Barbecue Guy says he's in West Mersey, the sun is out and in the garden in a t-shirt. Oh. Wow. West Mersey in a t-shirt, in the sun. You're a braver man than me today. It is, but at least it's not windy. Yesterday was windy and horrible. So. Oh, uh, yeah. Mike Matthews is on. Morning, Mike. Wow. Mike I play golf with, I used to work with. I'll be playing golf with him on Monday. 
having a practice round tomorrow, Mike, so you're in trouble. Anyway, cool. Right, let's crack on. Okay, let's do so, it. So, let's do this lamp. Sorry, Andy, I'll do, go this way. So, to speed things up a little bit, we have this lovely rack of lamb, and you can see I've just scored the fat so, uh, rack of lamb. This is, go back a bit. If you think about- I thought you meant me then. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> if you think about a rack of lamb, I'm looking at it endways. It has the bone sticking up, and then you have the loin in here. The bit above it on the bone is this piece. So those are just those bones all trimmed off where you trim off a normal rack of lamb. Um, so Miles tells me, do this hot and fast and it will be delicious. So we're gonna try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So I've scored it. I'll wipe down this board in a minute. I've scored it. Um, I'm gonna put some oil onto it. So just let me grab my oil. Little bit of oil on there. And we're gonna do it like we do a rack of lamb. Um, I'll go and wash my hands in a second. Just do that. Um, come over here, Andy. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. gonna do it like we would do a rack of lamb. So we're gonna do it straight on the plate setter, skin side down. Um, this is one of the cooks we do in the, in the class. Um, but it's a goodie, everyone likes it. Um, the bit of lamb we had yesterday was really huge, so um, it actually works better with smaller bits, but it was, it was good. Right, so we've put a bit of fat, a uh, bit of oil on that. What we've done on the egg over there, set it up for an in, uh, indirect cook with the plate setter, but I'll show you that. Hands up wet, so I can't do the buckle. There we go. And all we're gonna do is put a bit of salt on here, or a lot of salt on here. If you come to one of our cooks, you'll know salt is key. And I've chopped up some rosemary from the garden, so I'm gonna put that on it. It might burn a bit, but it will add a load of flavor into the skin. So I'll wash my hands again in a second. <laughs> Get that in there. How's that look? Beautiful. Oh, too. Yep, yeah, nearly. Right, let's go around to this egg. Okay. So in here, at roughly 180, 200 degrees, it's reading a bit high the thermometer, I think it's slightly wrong. You can see we've got our plate setter in, our convector in, but we've got it feet down. Um, so the only time I tend to ever use a plate setter uh, feet down uh, is for this cook. Um, you saw the pizza, hopefully you saw the pizza one last week. Just give that a little zhuzh. Um, but what we want to do is get that lamb on there. Can you hear that little bit of sizzle? That's what we're after. So we're going to get that in. We're going to crisp up the fat by putting it on the plate set of the wrong way up. Um, it's the clean side. It's going to draw that fat, uh, draw the moisture out. Um, and then we'll try and we'll tip it over on here and do the back on here, or we might put a, 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 a normal grid in there. So let me just wash my hands. That's our first cook. Our second cook, we've done bits of this before, but Miles, um, there's always a, a surprise when you go and see Miles at the butcher. It's, it's like he knows you're coming. In fact, I did announce that I was gonna arrive, but uh, there's always a special bit of meat on the side. Helen always thinks it's hilarious. There's always a special bit of meat on the side that you've got to try. Um, so let's have a look at what we've got. I'll come round, Andy. I'm just going to grab it from mm -hmm. behind you. Um, so, just a couple of little bits. That's why I've said it today is snacks. And they're both, or both, he informs me, considered skirt steak. Now, if you've had a normal <coughs> skirt steak, and we ate, we had skirt steak in the class yesterday, um, you t it's a, you know, sort of, that sort of size, centimetre and a half thick with the grain running along it. Now this is slightly different cut, but this is bavette. So the French eat a lot of bavette, but you can see it's really grainy. Um, and bavette really works well when it's cooked hot and fast, uh, almost blue in the middle. The second bit is also, you can see quite a lot of grain going this way. If I put it in the sunshine, let's get it in the sunshine. You see grain, a lot of marbling in there. This is the bottom of a tri-tip. Now, um, Tri-tip, I haven't got my cow picture or pig picture jumper on today, but 
just ahead of the back leg at the bottom of the belly is a triangular muscle that comes down and it's tri-tip. And so this is the bottom edge of that, right next to the skirt. It's got the same grain as the skirt. The Americans love to reverse this um, tri-tip and a lot of us get tri-tip confused with picanha. They are totally different, uh, totally different dishes. So we're gonna cook those two. Um, we could marinate them, we're not going to. We're gonna do, just cook them as they are. But with them, we're gonna put a chimichurri. So I'm just gonna wash them one more time since I've touched those. And we'll get a quick chimichurri together to go with it. And then we're gonna cook, uh, cook those. We'll cook them right at the end. Um, we're, but we'll have a chimichurri with them. The third dish, they always come out in lumps. Helena's smiling away over there, so it's obviously some good. Darren oh, morning, Darren. How are you? On. Morning, Dean. Darren in Wokingham, Dean in. I want to say South East London, South East London. I don't know why I'm saying that. Jeanette's on. Morning, Jeanette. Team um, Red. Um, anyway. Scott's Foods is on. Morning, Scott's Foods. Right, Jimmy Churi. I'm going to keep this fairly simple. I did wash my knife and then I've um, left it inside Helena. I knew I'd leave something in. Greenwich. Oh, there you go. Should know that. Dean buys a lot of stuff for me. So. <laughs> Sorry, Helen has just gone to get uh, my knife, which I've washed beautifully to bring out and then left it indoors. Probably find I haven't washed it either. You're in trouble. Yes. Right, let's go through. And so there are all sorts of recipes for chimichurri. You can have a red chimichurri. You can have a... Uh, a green chimichurri. I like to do them with a bit of spice in them. So we've got some chili in ours. Um, I did leave that chili out. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but I've just chopped up half a shallot. You don't have to put shallot in there. You could put a, a sweet onion in there. I'm just going to go for half a shallot. Now I don't need huge amounts today because we've only got two of those two little bits of meat. So we're going to take a bit of parsley. Uh, just going to flat leaf parsley, roll it up, and then just chop it nice and fine. You could do this in a blender if you wanted, but it doesn't take long. I want it nice and rustic. So we've got some parsley, we've got that shallot in there. I'm gonna put in half a red chili, one of these long red finger chilies, because I like it a bit spiky. I've got a clove of crushed garlic um, in there. Now, chimichurri, um, I'm just going to take the top off. I'm going to pour in quite a lot of olive oil in here just to loosen that up. Perfect. A little bit of white wine vinegar, so about a tablespoon. Or you could use, use lemon juice. And then we're just going to whisk that up. Mix that together. We'll pop a bit of salt in there, a bit of pepper if it needs it. It's got raw garlic in there, so this is gonna be punchy. So do make sure you mix it around enough so you don't get one big lump of uh, garlic on your steak, or you guess get one big lump of start garlic on the steak. You could put some coriander in here. All right. Oh, that's nice. Tiny bit of salt. Tiny bit of black pepper, which I have brought out here somewhere. Perfect. Little bit of black pepper, and that's our dressing. So I'll use a different fork this time. So there you go. A very quick chimichurri. Perfect. So that's ready to go on. So this egg over here, um, let me just grab a drink. I've got a bit of parsley stuck in my throat. So if you come and look in here, Andy, we've got this egg on, I'm gonna turn it up. There's no surfaces in here. We're gonna do dirty. I'll cook it Ooh, dirty. Nice, like dirty. Um, dirty skirt is always a good thing, apparently. 
what my mum told me. <laughs> so I'm just going to knock those char uh, coals and now we're going to turn it up. So I want this to be about 250 to 300 degrees. We want it hot. So I'm going to turn it up and we're going to come back to this one in a little bit. Um, and then we'll cook our steaks dirty, rest them for a bit, um, and then slice them nice and thin, serve them with a bit of chimichurri. So that's our second dish. Let's go and have a look how our lamb's doing. So, Helena, any questions, comments? No, I've got a couple of new people that have joined. Um, oh. Sarah Shepherd, Outdoor Kitchen Islands, Andrew Stoneman, uh, Ellery's Kitchen, Paul White. Morning, Paul. Uh, Kerry Churchill. How are those skis, Paul? Nick from Car Brighton. Morning, hey. Nick. Hello, hey. Nick. Bruno's just joined. So this, can you we see don't talk what about smells? Bruno. <laughs> we don't talk about what? Bruno. What's that mean? What's it's that from, from a movie from or something? Canto. Oh. Anyway, have a zoom in on that fat. So it's already starting to crisp up a little bit. We'll take it a little bit more. Top bit still not cooked. It's roasting a little bit, but we're just moving that on the plate setter. So, any questions, people? Oh, well, I haven't asked that question yet. There you go. Ask away. So, yeah. what temperature have you got the lamb at? The lamb is between 180 and 200. Don't take it above 200 uh, because then you'll burn the lamb fat. It, you will, it will charcoal, it will blacken. Um, anywhere up to 200, it will then just render on the plate setter works really well. Your plate setter's not ruined, you turn it over, it'll all burn off. Um, you don't ever wash it, it just, it's just uh, how you do Can it. Can you just do a repeat of what the cut of meat is yes. on that one? Yes, so this is um, lamb spare ribs. Um, so I think I did my little, if you can think of end on of a rack of lamb, you've got the loin bit and then you've got the bone sticking up that they French trim like that. Fingers work really well for that. <laughs> um, it's the bit above that. So that's that cut. So you can see the bones in here. Um, pretty much the same piece of meat, really. So then we're going to individually cut those ribs up. We're going to put a bit of mint sauce over them. It's going to be gorgeous. Right. Anything else, Helena? Uh, no, that's it so far. I'll ask everyone what they're cooking today. Yes. What are you cooking today? What are, what's on the on the menu? Let's see. Let's see some black clouds coming. Anyway, right now. This third dish is squid. Yes. So, um, it's one of those, you might love it, you might hate it. This dish I have stolen. Uh, well, sort of stolen. Um, I went down to uh, High Grange, Devon. So Luke uh, runs a cookery school down there, an outdoor fire school. So he's got eggs, he's got fire pits, he digs holes in the floor and, you know, chucks in food. Um, his setup is beautiful. It's down on the Devon Dorset border near Axminster, near Lyme Regis. Um, we went down, I went down with Julie, I think I told you before, but went down a couple of weeks ago and he served this squid dish just as an appetizer. Um, he didn't tell me what the recipe was, but he sort of said what was in it. So we're going to try it. Um, and it was just delicious. So we're going to cook on this egg over here, which is probably too hot. Uh, we'll find out. So I've got it set up with a wok. Yeah, I've got it a little bit warm at the moment, so I'll turn it down. What I will do, um, you've seen me do this before. I'm going to create a space just to put, take the wok out for a second. Just move these. Um, um, the oil, I want to be about 220 degrees. I've, as we've been cooking, I've let it uh, overheat it will won't take that long at all to cool down so I'm just going to pop it down there for a couple of minutes yeah. that's because it's chuffing chilly here yeah it will, <laughs> <laughs> it will really cool down quickly so we're going to use the wok in the expander basket um, what we're going to do I went to Cambridge fish market this morning we have some beautiful squid so I've prepped all of that but I just want to show you what you do with the hoods of these um, so we'll take our knife, go inside the hood and chop it and then you can open it up. And you want to score it and you score it on the inside. So just run your knife, you don't want to cut all the way through, but you just want to run your knife 
so it cuts about halfway through the squid, I'm doing about five mil, something like that, and then turn it, and then run it across in the other direction, okay? And you get this lovely crisscross. Now this will stop it rolling up really tight. I mean, it's still curl a little bit. Um, then I want to chop these bits into more manageable bite-sized pieces. So a bit like the, if you've been to uh, one of our classes with Nick, when we do the Thai classes, um, everything in Thailand is made so it's, it's bite size, which I thought was kind of cool. So look up Cab Brighton, Carb Brighton even. Um, yeah. Just a question. Yeah. If someone's asked, would you cook on a, can you cook what we're doing on a Cardo deflector plate? I'm assuming that. Yeah, would... absolutely. Yeah, they're just ceramic. Yeah, so if you've got a Kamado, go for it. So I'm just chopping these up into more manageable pieces. And we'll pop them in. Oops, with our squid. Um, the other bits in here, we've got the tentacles. I'm going to leave those whole. Uh, the wings are in here. I've taken those off. And again, I've just scored them on the inside. But these are all just little bits. We'll get them all in there. And then here we have just some um, corn flour. So I'm going to wait until that oil's cooled down a tiny bit. And then we're going to put them in the corn flour, flour and then we're going to deep fry them. They won't take long at all. So let me just wash my hands. Nick, why corn flour and not flour? Makes it crunchier. Okay. A little bit crunchy. Now, the other two ingredients we have here. Some Szechuan peppers. If you've ever had Szechuan pepper, um, makes your tongue numb. What did we do someone with Szechuan recently? Um, so I'm going to put it, I might just give it a mini roast. So let's just, while we're waiting, I'm going to put some Szechuan's in there. I'm just going to chuck them on the fire in here just for a second. So I'll just put them straight on the charcoal and we'll just heat them up a little bit. So don't let me forget those in about two or three minutes. Um, so we've got some Szechuan pepper. And then the other secret ingredient from Luke. Everyone hate, I don't know why it's hated so much. But can you, I don't know if you can read that. MSG. So MSG is a bit like salt, but it's more umami. And so when I said to Luke, what's on that squid? It was MSG. So we're going to try it and use it a bit like salt, but it just has a more rounded flavour. Um, as long as you don't eat tons and tons of this, it's fine. So we're going to use some MSG. Right, let's see how warm our oil is. Look at that, down to 200 degrees, just like that. So that's dropped 50 degrees. So now it's too cold. Mm -hmm. It'll warm up in a second. So we'll pop that back in. Um, we've talked about this a lot um, the temperature of your egg will be less than the temperature of your oil because the oil is sat right by the fire um, so this is a, you can see this is down at 100 and let's say 160 that oil is at 200 degrees so just set up your egg to be lower temperature than the temperature of the oil you want. I'd overdone that one, but we'll live with it. Um, if you do that, then you're not gonna set the oil on fire in here. It's gonna be safe. Um, if you do, just shut the lid. It's, it's, it's better than setting it, fire, setting it on fire in the kitchen. But, right. So we're gonna pop it into our uh, corn flour. Then we're going to deep fry it very quickly. It take a couple of minutes, take it out, and then we're going to um, sprinkle it with those um, peppercorns, which we'll get out, that Szechuan pepper, a little bit of MSG, just sprinkled over it, um, and then some lemon juice. That's a two minutes. Time. Two minutes, okay. Right, let me get a glove. Take this out. Oh yeah, starting to get... Oh. Can you smell those, Andy? It's hot, but... Oh, yep. Yeah, beautiful. So I'm just going to put them straight into a uh, mortar and pestle. Put that on somewhere. Heat through. And just give them a very rough... I don't want to break them down too much. 
It's a very rough crunch. You might not use all of this, but it's a really weird herb. It, make, it does make your tongue go numb. Right, let's get some of these done. So, oil is, why is this not flipping around? There we go. 205, 220 would be perfect, but that'll do. So I'm gonna take the squid, we'll do it in a couple of batches. Dust it, pop it in our oil. We're not going to be able to reuse the soil, but that's fine. It's going to cook so quickly. You don't want to overcook it and go rubbery. So just a couple of minutes. Something so rubbery there. Rubbery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right, I'm just going to pop that shut for a second, okay. wash my hands, and then Nick is going to remind me what that basket thing is called. Oh, yeah. But I lift the squid in and out with. Oh, I wanted to get a gold star. Spider, Spider there we go. Did he come back with that? Or you got it? Wow. Uh, so, uh, Bruno Yeah. Just use salt and pepper. So we've done a salt and pepper squid before. It's, it's delicious. Coming in. Yeah. Um, so just salt and pepper for these. Ah, oh, it was just so good. So curled up a bit. Pop on some grease proof. Oh, on grease proof. Kitchen towel, sorry. Get them in there. These are going to be ready way before everything else, but that doesn't matter. Put them in three little batches. Getting filthy. Any other questions, Helena? Mm, Look at those. Love I'm just squid. Gonna... Oh, Steve from yesterday? No. Oh. Oh, Steve WG. Sorry, late in the register. Steve, Bad only boy. He only lives around. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> he only lives around the corner, and I believe he was in the Red Lion last night. It looked like a photo I saw. He was in the Red Lion. So, oh. looking good. Get them in. Oh, I might do yeah, a little bit more. No, a little, little, little bit longer. longer. Sorry. Ooh, too keen. Two, two, yeah, gun ho this morning. While it's doing, let's have a look at the lamb. Keep on your toes, Andy. Oh, look at that. I'm going to call that and do the other side now. Now, we want this pink in the middle, so I don't want to mess it up. I could put a meter in here, it's a bit thin. We're not far off that end. Yeah, 50 degrees down here. So this end's a thicker end. We're gonna have some more done at this end, less done at that end. Um, medium rare, late, 50 degrees. So, something like that. Right, get these out. Why were you smiling, Andy? Because I thought, I thought someone was commenting on how delicious you were, but then there was a added oh. comment of the food. Oh. So. Right. Get these ones out. Probably put too many in in one go. So what the temperature? This will, it will drop the temperature. So you can see we're down at 150. So we'll go back in. They're all thin bits now. Just be careful as you put them in that you don't splash yourself. Obviously, just open the bottom up a bit more. We'll speed that up. Top a bit more. Give that a second. Right. Covered. I'll wait until I've got those out. Dirty little cat. <laughs> so that egg is getting nice and warm. Our lamb's looking good. Our squid's nearly done. Are you doing the steak dirty? Yes. Yep, we're going to do the steak dirty. So I'm going to put 
a uh, little bit of salt on it. So we've got these two. So as a reminder, this is our onglet. This is our uh, tri-tip. Both considered to be bits of skirt, according to Miles the Butcher. So a bit of salt on those. Flip them over. If you've not had, uh, sorry, not onglet, bavette. If you've not had bavette, do try it. It is stunning. See, we're up at 200. I'm gonna go a little bit hotter to open it up. So we've got about halfway at the bottom and about two fingers wide at the top. That'll take it up to 250, 300 degrees. Perfect for these little bits of steak. Let's get our squids. Bubbling nicely. Give it another minute or so. Oh, these are gonna be good. Right. Oh, Andy's getting cold. Oh, it's blowing up and the clouds yeah, the wind's are coming just in. the started, doesn't it? Right. Don't want to overcook them. So take those out. I'm going to turn this egg off, um, especially since it's got hot oil in it. We'll take these over. So I want a little sprinkling of this MSG. So it's very much like salt. So I'm going to put too much on. It's not salty, but don't need that much. Didn't see that. Cool. And we'll also get some of this Szechuan pepper on in here. Give them a little zhuzh. Hopefully I've done Luke proud. I don't know what his dish, you know, the ingredients exactly were. His Szechuan was a little bit Oh yeah, we've done well. <laughs> I'm gonna put them in here. Oh, great! I've definitely got to wash that board up now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Andy. <laughs> we'll put some lemon over the top of it. I don't know if Luke did that, but let me just wash these. How are we doing for time? Perfect. Put a lemon over the top and we'll get it out to our audience over there. Is it raining? Mm. Jeez. I'm going to poke them up with a little, if you don't, if you don't like spice it doesn't matter, but um, a few little bit of slivers of chilli just to give it a bit of colour. More for the aesthetic. Tiny bit of coriander. Green and red and stuff always looks nice. They look lush. So let's take those over and see what these guys make of them. Mm. Now don't destroy it because we need to take a photo of it. <laughs> so can we try it? Yeah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> you like that? Mm. Good. Mm. Peppers in there, tastes nice. Mm. Oh, that lamb we could go, good. We could go mad and make it dirty as well. Going into the middle, 66, yeah. This is all, almost done. I'm gonna call it and rest it. So, leave my foil. Move that out the way. Did you try it, Helena? Yeah. What do we think? Yeah. Put that in there. We we're going to chop it up into the individual ribs. So if you want to cook them any more, you can then put them back. We're going to rest that for five. Have you got the numb, numb, numb tongue? Can you see which way the rain's going? Um, not yet. Look at it. It sounds like it's lush. Mm. It is. Beautiful. Right. Let's get these skirts on. <clears throat> so if you look, our egg is above 250 degrees C. Um, so on the inside is centigrade. We look in, we've got a nice little fire going. Just gonna knock the worst of any ash off. And then we're gonna go in. Mm. 
There you go. Looking good. So we'll give those a couple of minutes, flip them. That'll do. Yeah. The internal temperature we're aiming for was uh, late 50s. So, oops, oh, sorry. Just grab this. Um, so yeah, if you want, uh, 63 would be good for a medium lamb, 57 is good for medium rare. Um, we might have gone a little bit beyond because we've not been paying attention. There'll be no squid left at this rate, you guys. Got to take a photo, put the recipe up. Okay, um, so yeah, 57 degrees uh, is where I'd like to be. I think I've just gone beyond it. So, But then we're going to cut them up. Uh, and serve them as individuals with a bit of a drizzle of um, a bit of a drizzle of mint sauce. There you go. Just trying to restyle it now. Right. Filling the gaps. So, in prep for our steak and our lamb, it's board done. And we'll get another one for the knife. So. Next week, we've got class two on Friday, or class one, second of our class ones on Friday. Uh, but we will be back on Saturday, and then I think the following week's Easter. So Big Green Egg are doing a big push on roasts. Um, we're not going to do roasts. Um, uh, roasts for me are winter, so... Um, salad. We're not going to do salad, Mum. <laughs> That's going to be really tricky. <laughs> But we will do some lamb. So we do a chili crusted rack, uh, chili crusted leg of lamb, butterflied. So I'm planning on doing that. It is delicious. Um, we haven't done it in ages, so it'll be a real treat. So we'll do that. Um, and I don't know what else we'll do. We'll do something else about, you know, Easter, maybe eggs, Scotch eggs. I don't know. No. Oh, Helena turned up and knows that. What else at Easter? Something chocolatey. A dessert, maybe. So we'll work that out. Next week, who knows? So if you've got any ideas, send them through. Right, let's have a look at our steaks. Obviously, you saw me burp that. And when you flip these, you're going to get a bit of... Yep, set. back in the room. When you flip them, you're going to get a bit of charcoal stuck to them. But just take it off. Again, flip. Oh, that is looking good. Now, I'm going to serve this really, really quite rare. Because that's the way I love it. Um, Ooh, an unlucky recipe. Amazing. I love it, Ray. Cool. Right. So, lamb. Let's have a look. While that's finishing up, we'll. Uh, then we've got an opportunity to slice it. And if we want to cook it a little bit more, we can do cook the individuals. Yeah. Have yeah. got any of the baskets in stock? Fire baskets. No, the bar of the rotisserie baskets. Are they? Rotisserie. Oh, I don't know. No, you don't mean. Rotisserie oh. baskets, yes, we found some under the stairs yesterday. Okay, if no. that's what you mean. If you mean. Which baskets do you mean? Just ask, just say to Eddie. Eddie, which baskets do you mean, please? Wow. Right. So let's, this is just like pork ribs. Oh. Shares are trying to get between them. Uh, and Ben Hudson said, is that the lamb with the anchovies? Uh, no, it's not the lamb with the anchovies. The lamb with the anchovies is the one we did for the live Big Green Egg cook. Uh, Easter time. So I've got some bones here. Uh, so no, he means like the fire I might have to... The fire bar... Oh, the stainless steel fire basket where the charcoal sits in. No, we don't have any in stock. Uh, but... I think they came back into stock with Big Green Egg yesterday, this week. Sorry, I'm struggling here. I haven't got my cleaver, but. So basically. But I can get them for you. So just give me a shout. Yeah. Uh, I will quote you for it, and uh, we can get that delivered to you. And do you know what the lead time on the minute max is? Uh, about five working days at the moment. Okay. And again, give me a shout. We can source that for you. I need a butchery lesson from Miles. This, Miles is going to come and do a butchery class. I could have done with him today. He could have um, showed me the way of getting these off the bones more easily. There we go. Well, I'll do a few and the rest we can uh, worry about later. Well, there we go, we'll get that bit off. 
he says. Oh, they're hot too. That's what I'm going to say. Oh, I'll just go with those ones for now. We'll worry about the others later. So these, Mama will like. I'm going to get them. Oh, taking a bit of meat off that one. A bit of bone there. Slightly overdone them, but that's because I'm chatting to you. They cooked a lot faster than I was expecting. I'm going to get a bit of mint sauce on them. Gadget to sharpen your knives. Ah, um, yeah, there's one by IO Shen, which is awesome. Um, I use that. I can't think of its name, but I will find it. Um, I'm just going to put a bit of chilli on those as well, just to make it look pretty. Um, I'll find that and post it on my site. Uh, it's not cheap though, it's about 300 quid. Oh. I didn't know that. Okay. So that's those. Right, let's get our steak. Burped again with style. Now in the interest of time, I'm not gonna rest this, but. So Luke from Highbank. Good morning, Luke. Did somebody, uh, did somebody tell you we were cooking your dish, Luke? Oh, I <laughs> Right. Just shut this egg. Now, obviously, at home, you would uh, rest this. We haven't got the time. We'll come back to the lamb in a minute. But this this piece is going to be rare in the middle. It's how it should be. Beautiful. It's hot. It should be. It's just come out of the barbecue. Now, some people like it cooked a bit more than that, but that is perfect for me. We'll get this at this end. So that is our uh, buffet. And then we're gonna get our little end piece of tri-tip. Now, with steak, can you see there's a grain running along it? We wanna cut across the grain. So always cut across the grain. This bit's done a bit more. So that is our end point tri-tip. Put that down in front. And then we're going to dress that with a little bit of chimichurri. Put some on the side, people will dip in. There we go. So, is that it? That's it. So this week, snacks. We've got lamb spare ribs that have been done hot and fast on the plate setter, on the back of the plate setter. We've got Szechuan pepper squid with a bit of MSG that gives it a lovely taste. And we've got two types of skirt or from the skirt area. We've got our um, bavette and we've got a bit of tri-tip. Not bad. So I'll take those over. Get some photos in a second, but Mama, have a taste of one of those. Probably go for that bit has no bone in it. This bit. Oh, she yeah. likes a bone though. I like a bone. We'll take that bit then. We'll take any of them. Take any of them. But have a nibble. See what you think. Can you still get the chopping boards? Chopping boards can't get any more, unfortunately. <laughs> Although I think big green, big green egg might be looking at getting them again. So you might have to fight this one, Matt. <laughs> Anyway. It's where her teeth come uh, out. Yeah. <laughs> Called a nana. Mama. Mm. Anyway. Is it good? Mm -hmm. oh, I want another bit of that squid. Right. So, I shouldn't have filled my mouth and then try and talk. Bang on, 45 minutes. So we'll be back next week. Anything Big Green Egg, Commodo Space, Blaze, all the other things, just give me a shout. I can get you a quote. I'm around this afternoon tomorrow morning I'm not around tomorrow afternoon or Monday I'm playing golf both of those uh, but we'll be back Tuesday so we've got to take some time off um, so have a great weekend rest of it and we will see you either at the class on Friday or uh, on Saturday next week cheers guys